So the first question we need to ask you is, what is reading? Uh -huh. In order to answer this question, we can say that reading is a skill which enables you to first understand the message, to recognize the written words, third, to reconstruct meaning from context, from texts. Another new ideas, this is what we call reading for information. We also read for tests. As students, of course, you have exams and you need to sit for exams and to pass your exams and your tests. In order to pass these exams and tests, you need to read. Of course, today we'll talk about some reading skills and reading subskills. Let's begin by reading subskills. As you know, these reading subskills are very frequent. You face them, you encounter, you encounter them along your textbook. Among these uh, subskills that are frequent, we find skimming, scanning, inference, locating reference, and summarize. This is an exercise that needs from you to match the subskills with their own definitions. As you can notice, we have on the left some subskills related to reading, and on the right, we have their definitions. Think about these reading subskills, read about their definitions, and try to match the right reading subskill with the right definition. I give you a moment. Think about it, we will correct together. Okay, let's correct the exercise we have assigned you before. Scheming. Scheming, this is a reading subscale that means reading for general information. Scanning means reading for specific information. Inference refers to understanding a word from a word meaning from context. Locating reference. It means identifying what a word refers to. Summarizing means summing up the main ideas of the text. Right. Now, let's move to one important method in read. This is very famous method, which is called ask you for hours. Ask you for hours method. This is one technique which is very efficient in reading reading comprehension texts. Now, this is also a task given to you. You are given some, some reading strategies on the left and what they refer to as definitions on the, on the right. Try to read them, to think about them, take your time. We will correct this text with your questions in mind. Look for the answers and write them in your own words to guarantee a better understanding. Reading strategy number two is Question. Question refers to uh, one good idea, which is about while you are surveying, ask questions you think the text will answer. You can write these questions to concentrate and focus your attention. Reading strategy number three is survey. Survey refers to one idea which revolves around this. Before you read the text, survey it to get its main idea or purpose. Look for the title and subtitles, pictures and the captions, charts, charts and graphs, introduction and conclusion, introductory and concluding sentences. Reading strategy number four 
reflect. Reflect refers to the idea which revolves around this. Reread your questions, notes, and evaluate how much information you can recall, information you can remember. Try to explain the process you went through and think of how you think of how you you can improve your reading comprehension skills. Read. Review. This is about reading. Now, let's move to the uh, sixth. These reading strategies are not put in order. They are not in number one, two, three, four, five, six. From what you have got, from what you have concluded, from what you have understood, from what you have learned from the task above, try to put them in a logical order, that is, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. I gave you a time to think about this task. Take your time. We will correct together. All right, let's move to the correction. So, the reading strategy that comes number one is survey. Next, number two is question. Reading strategy number three is read. Reading strategy number four is recite. Reading strategy number five is read. The last reading strategy, which means strategy number six, is reflect. Okay, good. Now, let's move to talk about some types of reading skills. As you know, we have different types of reading skills, but we'll focus today just on two important reading skills. Number one, word guessing skills. Number two, paragraph reading skills. Reading skills, we need to define them. What do you think reading skills refer to? Uh -huh. Let's define them together in order to clarify things about reading skills. To define reading skills, we can say they involve your ability to read and understand words phrases, sentences, and other symbols or visuals in a text. Of course, we'll focus on context. First, to define or to answer the question of what is a context, we can say a context is the sentence and the paragraph in which this word can be discovered. And how to understand the word from context? There are so many uh, things or skills you can follow, but we'll focus only on two important skills. First skill, which is how to understand a word from context, is use your knowledge of grammar. So grammar is very important to understand words from the context. Grammatical rules, the code. Number two, Use your understanding of the author's ideas. Of course, guessing words from context clues gives you the following information. So, information provided by the context, we can say uh, definition, example, restatement, synonymy, antonymy. Of course, we will define every one, every word we have just mentioned. What do we mean by a definition? What do we mean by an example? What do we mean by a restatement? What do we mean by a synonymy? What do you mean by an autonomy? Here is the answer. So, efficient use of a dictionary. 
we can say a dictionary is the best language teacher therefore you should be good at using it you should be good at using the dictionary a good dictionary provides lots of information for example if you are asked to fill in the blank the following sentence with one of the four choices you are given without a dictionary you can find it very difficult the sentence talks about the following let's hang up some paintings on these bare walls empty walls blank walls vacant walls so these words are close to each other concerning meaning if you don't check a dictionary you find it very difficult to fill in the blank with the right word now let's define it imagine we are using a dictionary let's define these four adjectives so bare means empty not covered by anything or not having any organization is available for someone to start doing as you see we have consulted the dictionary in order to explain everything about the above mentioned adjectives i mean bare empty blank and vacant after consulting the dictionary after checking the dictionary now it becomes easier for me to fill in the blank according to the context according to what the sentence wants to convey for example here are some example sentences sentence number one says this room looks very bad you need some pictures on the walls number two the house had been empty for six months before we moved in sentence number three leave the last page blank like a teacher talking to his or her students number four only a few apartments were still vacant okay you can see now that the dictionary helps us more to understand the context word formation that's another help for you as a reader in order to improve your reading skills word formation refers to english words usually contain three parts prefix is a group of words that can be put in the beginning of a word changes the meaning of a word for example we have happiness and when you add the prefix u n n it becomes unhappiness you can notice that we have changed the meaning to the opposite because happiness is the opposite of unhappiness number two we have the stem or the origin of the word the stem or the root determines the meaning of a word example and happiness you can see the adjective happy in the middle that's the root and that's the stem and finally number three suffix which is a group of letters put at the end of the original word at the end of the stem at the end of the root the suffix changes the part of speech per word for example and happiness you can notice that the suffix nets is added after the word or the adjective happy another technique to improve your reading skills is paragraph reading skills so finding the main idea in a paragraph helps you improve your reading skills finding the main idea means to find the topic sentence what is a topic sentence very simply the topic sentence contains the main idea or that contains the main idea of the paragraph also you can locate the topic sentence in that paragraph to understand the paragraph better and to improve your reading skills of a paragraph 
in. Let's explain every one of the three things together. Comprehension. In order to understand what you have read, you need to practice techniques that can improve your skills. So practicing techniques can improve the following skills. You can improve focus, identifying the purpose, the goal, and the aim of your reading, scanning, summarizing, sequence, draw a mental picture, check up, and reread. Now let's explain every skill we have just referred to. Focus. You know, in order to improve your reading comprehension, you should focus in your reading. To focus, you should put aside anything in your mind when you begin to read. Also, another important skill is to, to identify your purpose. Before you begin to read, before you begin reading, try to ask yourself, what do I want to know when I have completed this reading? What is the goal? Why am I reading? Okay? Another important skill is scan. To scan, and in order to improve your reading comprehension concerning scanning, Try to get an overview of the page, the chapter, the article of the book before you read carefully. In order to improve also your reading comprehension skill, skills, this is an important skill too. Summarize. What is to summarize? It means to mentally summarize. You, you use your mind to summarize as you move from one paragraph to another, especially if you are reading to gain and to understand or to get some information for handing a task. Sequence, also one important skill. It means after reading several paragraphs, after reading different paragraphs, try to think of the ideas in an appropriate order. Try to respect the chronological order of ideas. Another skill which is important also to improve your reading comprehension skills is draw a mental picture. Try to imagine what is it, what it is that is being discussed in the text. Chica, also one important reading comprehension skills. Chica determines Try to determine, when you check up, try to determine through a fast review of key points whether you have learned what you expected to learn or not. This is what we mean by the skill check up. Reread. That's also one of the other important skills you need to focus on and improve. Reread means begin a new begin again, read again, to also try to check the meaning in a dictionary or other references. As you have seen, consulting a dictionary, of course, will help you understand better the text you are reading. Number three, speed. Rate, the speed of course refers to the rate at which you at which pace you read, I mean the speed you are reading with. Try to improve reading rate with practice. As the English saying or the proverb says, practice makes perfect. If you want to be a good reader with improved reading skills, try to improve your reading rate with practice and practice and practice. Also, try to focus on an entire paragraph. Try to concentrate during the whole paragraph. Use your mind to read carefully the paragraph you are reading from the text. Number three, 
time you're reading and sit goals. If you want to read, sit some time for your reading and try to sit goals for your reading. Why am I reading? What is the purpose of reading? And of course, give special time for your reading. 